Don Orsillo and Jerry Remy back with you from Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, Florida, as we get ready for game two of the three game series. It's Paxton Crawford against Albie Lopez here tonight, as the Red Sox have had uh, their way so far in the season with the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. The Red Sox are a perfect 4 0 so far against this Devil Rays. I'd heard Larry Rothschild has been fired of the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, and a lot of people thought uh, that he would be fired at the end of last year, but uh, this year he has been fired today. And Hal McRae takes over. A couple of other changes made uh, on this coaching staff as well. Wade Boggs remains as the hitting coach. He has added Lee May to his staff. He'll be the first base coach. Jose Cardinal has been let go for now. Don't know if he'll be reassigned, but he is no longer on the coaching staff. Terry Collins, who had been in the bullpen, is now the third base coach. The former Red Sox player and former third base coach of this club, Billy Hatcher, has been made the bench coach. Bill Fisher, former Red Sox pitching coach, still the pitching coach. And Darren Dalton is now in the bullpen. So not only a change of uh, managers, they've changed some of the coaching staff. And really, I imagine, Jerry, they're just looking to make a shakeup at this point. What has been a very tough start for the Devil Rays. Well, you could see the handwriting on the wall. Where they had a very, very difficult road trip. They did not hit. They did not play good defense. So they come home last night in the first game, and the Red Sox bomb them. And, uh, and they made the move after the game with Rothschild. It was expected at the end of last season. They waited to give him another chance. It didn't work out. And Hal McRae gets his second Major League job. Take a look at tonight's starting lineup for the visiting Red Sox. Trot Nixon will lead it off. He's in right field tonight. Jose Offerman batting second, playing at second base. Carl Everett will be in center field, batting third. Manny Ramirez, the designated hitter, bats fourth. Dante Bichette in there tonight. He'll be in left field, batting fifth. Scott Hatterberg getting his second start of the year. He'll do the catching. He'll bat sixth. Jay Hillenbrand will be at third base and bat seventh. Brian Daubach back at first base, batting eighth. And Mike Lansing will get his try at shortstop tonight. There's they continue to switch up the shortstops on a nightly basis. And the defense for the Devil Rays, they're last in the league. They made 18 errors in 14 games. Vinny Castillo, who was benched on the Rothschild, gets to start tonight under McCray at third base. Felix Martinez, the shortstop. Rush Johnson at second. And Fred McGriff, the first. Ben Grieve, who has been slumping back in the lineup tonight. Gerald Williams in center. Jose Guillen in right. And John Flaherty doing the catching. And on the mound, actually not a bad day to take over for a new manager because at least you have your ace pitcher going to the mound. And he's pitched very well so far this season. Two and one, that loss coming to the Red Sox and Pedro Martinez, uh, he was shut out three nothing. But he's coming off a great performance against the Orioles, a nine inning complete game shutout. And he ran his record to two and one. Against the Red Sox in his career, three wins, two losses, 3.45 ERA. And the umpires tonight, uh, Brian O'Nora working in behind the plate with Bill Welke at first base. John Hirschbeck will work second base and Chuck Merriweather, the umpire at third base. Take a look at the game notes brought to you by Sullivan Tire. Red Sox pitching and shut out the Devil Rays for 24 consecutive innings. You mentioned the bad numbers defensively for Tampa Bay and the bullpen ERA Red Sox 1.59. That's the best in Major League Baseball. The Devil Rays at almost four and a half runs in their performances. And there is Hal McRae, his second stint as a manager. Of course, the Kansas City Royals first time around. Interesting, his comments here. He feels that he has really matured as a manager, more of a coach now than uh, maybe he was. He was not that far from being uh, removed from being a player last time out. And see his numbers, which uh, he had a winning record there in Kansas City in his four years with the Royals. But he will try his luck here in Tampa Bay. As Trot Nixon stands in, takes a pitch outside and high. And we're underway from Tropicana Field. A little chillier here today in the St. Petersburg area. By chilly, I mean somewhere in the high 50s, which is very chilly for them down here this time of year with a cold breeze outside. But of course, here in the climate controlled dome of Tropicana Stadium. 1-1 one, one on the ground right to Vinny Castilla. Bobbles it at the lip of the grass. Still plenty of time. And he retires Nixon for the first out of the first inning. And I mentioned Vinny Castilla back in the lineup. He was benched by Rothschild. Not hitting, not playing a very good defense. And uh, with Hal McRae taking over, it looks like Castilla has one more chance. Uh, here is a devil ray. I'll tell you one thing. Hal McRae, in his time as manager of the... Kansas City Royals was a very aggressive manager did a lot of hit and running a lot of bunting some squeeze plays and you can expect that from Tampa Bay uh, and the rest of the 
First pitch swinging is Offerman, and he lays it into left field for a base hit. Offerman has hit safely in 10 of his first 11, has now hit safely in 11 of his first 12 with that base hit to left. Apparently, one out single. apparently Don, a painful base hit. Jose uh, shaking the, the bees out of his hand after that one. Lopez throws a heavy ball, a heavy sinking fastball, and sometimes if you don't get it just right, you'll get the, those bees running through the hand. But it's always better when you get that with a base hit. One out, one on for Carl Everett. Is it safely in 10 of the last 11 games and in five straight games? He hit 346 on the year. Everett hit a big three run home run here in the second inning of last night's ball game. The Sox were up early in yesterday's game on top 7 nothing at the end of the first two innings. As they got to Travis Harper last night, Harper was shipped out after the ball game back to AAA as they had made. A roster move sending Travis Harper down. He had an option left, so they sent him to Durham. And they called up Dan Wheeler, a pitcher from the Rhode Island area. He's been called up again here to Tampa Bay. He's been here before. One one swung on a miss by Everett. It's one and two. One thing Lopez will do, he'll get a share of ground ball double plays. He had 29 last season, which was second most in the American League. And again, that's because of that hard sinking fastball. Offerman with his lead off first being held on by Fred McGriff over there. Everett strikes out hard stuff up and in and Carl down by way of the K first strikeout for Albi Lopez. Lopez a strikeout high for the season is six. He is up above the belt and under the hands. That's where they like to go with the hard stuff against Everett and picks up the strikeout. So Everett strikes out and it brings up Manny Ramirez who homered twice last night and now has three home runs on the year. Hitting at 415 of course the 12 game hitting streak at a 447 clip as he backs out of the way of that pitch. Devil Ray's glad to have Albie Lopez on the mound tonight. Had a tough time, of course, uh, the 10 runs that the Red Sox scored last night, albeit six were unearned, and that has been somewhat of a topic in the local papers here. Yesterday, the six unearned runs adds on to a pretty incredible amount. 14 games, they have allowed 24 unearned runs as a club, and they're on pace to smash the record of 123 that the Tigers had back in 1975. So they've had a lot of errors in behind them. They lead the majors in errors right now due to the Devil Rays with 18 out of the gate. So the defense been a little shoddy and pitching not entirely to blame for what has been a tough beginning. You know, you got to wonder if Larry Rothschild's home tonight, sitting back, having himself maybe a little cocktail and kind of enjoying the night, getting away from all this because it's been uh, tough on him the end of last year and certainly the beginning of this season. And he ahead 3 0 as he takes a strike over the inside corner. I imagine in a situation like that, the weight of the world is probably off his shoulders right now. Now he knows there's nothing he can do. It's over. Now sit back for a couple of days and plot your next move. And there for a strike, and it's 3 and 2. Lopez has battled back. He was down 3 and 0. Oh. But he's grooved a couple over and it's a full count. <laughs> Offerman with his lead off first after his base hit. Two down here in the top of the first inning. In the air to center, not hit hard. Gerald Williams coming on. He'll have a chance to run underneath it, make the catch, to retire the side. Red Sox are retired in the first at the end of half an inning. Boston nothing, Tampa Bay coming up. Back in Tampa Bay, the Red Sox did not score in the top of the first inning. Devil Rays will be coming to the plate in the bottom of the first. 
as uh, the Devil Rays will be bringing up with them a lineup that consists of Gerald Williams leading off. He'll be back in center field tonight for the D-Rays. Russ Johnson bats second, plays at second base. Greg Vaughn is going to be the designated hitter. He'll bat third. Fred McGriff clean up the spot at first base. Ben Green back in there. Boys, he struggled as of late. He is in there again, though. He will bat fifth, play in left field. Jose Guillen will be in right field, batting sixth. Vinny Castilla, third base, batting seventh. John Flaherty does the catching. He bats eighth. And Felix Martinez, good glove man, back at shortstop, batting ninth. Red Sox third in the league in defense. Seven errors in 14 games. Hillebrand, Lansing, Offman, and Daubach in the infield. Dante Bichette gets a start tonight, even against the right-hander out in left field. Carl Everett and Trot Nixon. Scott Hatterberg behind the plate. He's catching Crawford. Tonight will be making his third appearance of the season, a record of 1-0. He's worked 13 innings, allowed nine hits and three earned runs, 10 strikeouts, nine of those coming against Tampa Bay in that first outing. He got the win against the Devil Rays, a no decision last time out against the Yankees. Pitched very well. The Red Sox won that game 3-2. Gerald Williams leading it off here in the bottom of the first inning, hitting it 200 so far for the D-Rays. As he takes a pitch inside and high, ball one. Gerald Williams, who's had a couple run-ins with Larry Rothschild, probably one of the happy Devil Rays that he has gone, is hit sharply by Hillenbrand at third into left. And Williams is aboard here to begin things in the bottom of the first. As I mentioned, uh, one thing you're going have to have to watch out. Anytime a manager takes over, they like to start to make things happen offensively. So you may see some steals. You may see some hit and running. Try to be very aggressive. Williams hit the ball hard with topspin and quickly by Shea Hillebrand. And Williams, uh, I imagine, will pick up the base hit for that. They have indeed awarded him a base hit. Russ Johnson coming up. Johnson, the second baseman for the Devil Rays. Again, the year in AAA as Paxton Crawford looks the runner back to the bag at first. Williams leads the team with three steals, has not yet uh, been caught at second base. Crawford with a long pause and a pitch in there for a strike. Third base coach Terry Collins, of course, having major league managing experience with Houston and the Anaheim Angels. Some thought he may become the bench coach, but instead he goes to third base. And Billy Hatcher, who had been the third base coach, will be the bench coach. Good play by Daubach. Had to dig that out of the dirt on the throw over by Crawford. And they have been kind of using Darren Dalton as a catching instructor here now he is the bullpen coach so a whole shuffle of the coaching staff starting at the top with the new manager Crawford looking Williams back he's been most concerned with the progress of Gerald Williams over at first base he playing baseball that step off by the pitcher we talked about <laughs> that last night <laughs> wow <laughs> And we get it again. There goes Williams. The pitch is a strike. The throw from Hatterberg is not in time. And Williams makes a theft of second base here. Jumps into scoring position with nobody out. Yeah, that's what we talked about. They're gonna, not going to waste any time trying to create this, some offense. The offense has been struggling. They'll run every chance they get. They'll hit and run every chance they get. And no contest here for Hatterberg as Gerald Williams picks up his fourth steal of the season. Now we'll see Johnson try to go to the other way to try to advance Williams to third base. Devil Rays have had their problems. In fact, it's 24 consecutive innings against the Red Sox that they've not scored. That's since the third inning of April 7th. So it's been a pretty bad stretch for them against Boston. Of course, the Red Sox swept them at Fenway Park. They win the first game of last night's uh, first game of the three-game series. And trying to get off on the right foot tonight. Russ Johnson down on the count, nothing in two. Johnson has been at second base every day since Bobby Smith was sent out of town. The opening day second baseman for the Devil Rays was shipped out to Durham. And ever since then, Russ Johnson has been at second base, done a pretty good job. 
time called at the last possible second Crawford chose to continue on in as Ryan Onora grants a timeout at the last possible second. The one two pitch to Russ Johnson. Fouled off Hatterberg. Well, Paxton Crawford's been very concerned again with Gerald Williams. He's taken a good bit of time in between pitches. Only the one strikeout against the Yankees. Uh, he had nine strikeouts against Tampa Bay back at Fenway Park. bit high it evens out at two and two this is this third start of the year for Paxton Crawford as you saw the no decision against the Yankees a win against Tampa Bay just working a career high seven innings the first time out against the Devil Rays two two on the ground softly towards shortstop Lansing they'll play a third throws to first in time to get Russ Johnson for the innings first out but on to third base goes Gerald Williams Because Lansing had to come in so far to uh, catch this ground ball. He really had no chance to spin around and throw Williams out at third base. A gamble taken by Williams, but uh, you can see clearly no chance for Lansing. He'll go across the diamond and get the shore out. So they do get the man to third base, uh, not the conventional way, but he is standing there, and that brings up Vaughn. A chance to give the Devil Rays a lead. Vaughn hitting at 286, three homers, seven runs driven in. The designated hitter for the D-Rays. Noticed on their uniform this year, they just go with the Rays across the chest rather than the Devil Rays. I think they've dropped the Devil for the most part as this has popped up. Foul ground third base side. Hillenbrand ranging over, and he makes the catch just beyond the third base coach's box. And there's two outs in the inning. Paxton Crawford talked to us a little bit about his style. My three pitches are coming along. You know, like I want them. Uh, fastball is pretty much always there. I miss with it sometimes, you know, with some spots and that sort of thing. But uh, slider's real sharp. And uh, change up, I'm working on a different grip. Um, and it still, you know, sinks down and away from lefties. That's what I wanted to do. So um, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty happy. Baxter Crawford. Well, on the mound tonight, has gotten two outs here. After Gerald Williams got aboard, he's at third base right now. Fred McGriff stands in and takes a strike over the outside corner. That's the changeup he was talking about, trying to sink it down and away from the left-handed hitters. Fred McGriff with two home runs so far in the year. And as Gerald Williams came dancing down the line, so Paxton Crawford backs off. Williams has definitely grabbed the attention of Paxton. He's been jumping around down there at third base. Crawford has to work out of the uh, set position because Hillebrand is so far off the line with McGriff at the plate that uh, Gerald Williams can get just a huge lead. So if you wind it up, uh, there's always a possibility of the uh, steal of home. That's why uh, Crawford going from the set. Sees Williams move. All he's going to do is step off. Hatterberg's going to go out and talk to Paxton Crawford. Well, this is game two of the three-game series. One game left here, and we'll see Pedro tomorrow night against the Devil Rays. He'll be opposed by Paul Wilson. Wilson going tomorrow night for Tampa Bay. He's 0-1 so far in the year. He's trying to score here in the bottom of the first inning. A 1 1 for Paxton Crawford. In there. Oh, no. I was going to say high strike, but too high, and it's 2 and 1. Well, what are you, an umpire now? I was going to call it for him. <laughs> I liked it. I liked that pitch. I don't blame you, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> What'd you think? You think that was a strike? 
Um, I'll, yeah, I'll go along with you. I thought it was a high strike. I don't want to be confrontational this early. 2-1. Uh, right back at him. Hits Crawford. Bounces off him to the third base side. He's able to throw to first, and they get him to get out of the inning. But how is Paxton? Right back at him. He will run off on his own power. He's able to get the big put out to end the inning. And Paxton Crawford gets out of the jam in the first. Still no score from Tampa Bay. It's on now to the last of the second inning. Ben Grieve, Jose Guillen, and Vinny Castilla to face Paxton Crawford. Grieve has been in a miserable slump as of late as he takes a look at strike one. One for his last 31 and 0 oh for his last 16. And has not yet homered as he takes a look at strike two. Quickly down, nothing in two. We've seen him take uh, early batting practice, trying to get back on track here with his new ball club. And he may hear as he drives it through the right side of the infield for a base hit. Second straight inning, the lead man aboard with a base hit. That's the kind of thing that drives the hit pitching coach crazy. 0 2 pitch, too good to hit. And Grieve, who's really been struggling, uh, gets a break. They wanted to go up in the zone, not high enough, just above the belt. And Grieve picks up the base hit. The old days used to find pitches uh, for allowing base hits on 0 2 counts. And snaps the 0 for 16 stretch. And it brings up Jose Guillen, the right fielder, hitting at just 118 so far. And Paxton jumps ahead, nothing in one. Yeah, has started four games on the year, all in right field. Okay. A very good spring training. Hit 411 this spring training for the Devil Rays. Who train right here in St. Petersburg, not far from where we are. Yeah, they don't have to go very far at the end of the spring training. No. Uh, they go about a mile up the road <laughs> from their spring training complex to Tropicana Field. I guess they don't send a truck like the Red Sox do down there to begin spring training. No one's a little high on the counters one and one. Last night a lot of breaking balls to Guillen and uh, tonight Crawford starts him out with back to back sliders. And just 24 years of age. As and Grieve, whose lead was not terribly large. Hit hard and through the left side in the left field for a base hit. And Grieve will move up 90 feet to second base, and the Devil Rays in business here in the second. There's two men aboard. Once again, they try the breaking ball uh, with Ian, and this time he's all over it. He's kind of flat. You see Hatterberg set up outside, just stays right out over the plate, and Ian hits a rocket past Hillebrand for the hit. Well, we got a change over at first base. We have Lee May now going to the coach's box. They had Darren Dalton to start, and now May, who was probably just getting here, they just notified him this morning that he was going to be a coach. He takes over here in the second inning. And a big cut by Vinny Castilla, the third baseman, who's off to a tough start, was actually benched by the former manager, Larry Rothschild. Vinny hitting just 206. In the dirt, it gets away from Hatterberg. Everybody's going to move up 90 feet. Ben Greve goes to third. Jose Guillen up to second base. As it jumped off of Hatterberg back into his right. Now, control not real good this inning uh, for Paxton Crawford. 
Tries that slider again. This time it bounces and uh, deflects right off the chest protector of Hatterberg. And two men move into scoring position. And still nobody out in the inning. First base is vacant now as he goes after Vinny Castillo. Castillo is hitless in his last 18 at bats. And has been benched ever since uh, starting the first nine games of the year for the D-Rays. As he swings and misses here, and it's one and two. Good change up that time from Crawford. The Castillo is a terrific fastball hitter, but has had problems throughout his career with the breaking ball and changeup. Well, he had an injury plague season last year. Only played 85 games. He had three different stints on the DL. Left oblique muscle, right wrist problem, a back problem. He had high hopes here last year for the Devil Rays. He and Jose Canseco were both here. As the one two is up and away they really loaded up their lineup with a lot of punch but it never really materialized all the punch that they act, uh, went out and got ended up pretty much on the DL the bulk of the year. Ended up punchless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Vinny Castillo has been punchless so far this year as well. And he backs out he's waiting on the two two. Benny Castilla strikes out for the first out of the inning. First strikeout for Paxton Crawford. Well, he did not see one fastball, not at bat. Uh, the changeup on the 2 2 count again. Red Sox know he's a good fastball hitter, not going to give him one unless it's the waste. And the crowd has been getting on Castillo. It's the first time I think I've ever heard a Devil Ray crowd get on one of their players in their short history. They booed him when he was introduced before the game, and again after striking out with a couple of men in scoring position. So one away and it brings up John Flaherty the catcher. He a 225 on the year a home run. This ball straightens him up and it's one and no. Maxton Trofford trying to get out of a jam here in the second inning. The Devil Rays left a runner at third in the first. Maxton has had trouble getting the leadoff man in each of the first two innings. Good fastball and it's one and one. You see John Flaherty better with runners on than he is with the bases empty. And that is hit well to left. Dante Bichette ranging back shy of the track. He is there. And he'll make the catch, tagging from third, and scoring will be Ben Grieve. And going to third is Jose Guillen as the Devil Rays take the one nothing lead on the sack fly by their catcher John Flaherty. Well, anytime you're at the plate in that situation, you are looking for something that you can lift in the air. And uh, certainly right now, Flaherty did get that kind of pitch. They try to go up and in with the fastball. They go up, but not in. And Flaherty's able to lift that ball deep enough to get a run home and also advance that man from second base. So John Flaherty picks up his seventh RBI. Tampa Bay on top, one to nothing. They get the lead. They break that scoreless streak against uh, the Red Sox that they had all the way back from April 7th. And they have snapped it here. Felix Martinez, a number nine hitter and shortstop. So the pitch outside ball one with the man at third base a little more pressure on the Red Sox because Martinez will bunt in at uh, first and also in at third that streak had reached 25 consecutive innings without a run against the Red Sox until the double race scored here again the second inning. See, Felix Martinez has done very well so far against the Red Sox. Waiting on the 1 1 from Paxton Crawford. Ooh, 
Felix Martinez had unusual success against Pedro Martinez. On April 8th at Fenway Park, he was two for three against Pedro. Only a light hitting shortstop. Short on the count. Ray trying to get his first win here with the Devil Rays. And he grounded foul over in his direction off the front of the Devil Rays dugout. They have protective screens here outside the dugouts. And the payoff pitch to Felix Martinez. A little pop up into shallow right center. Offerman's back at plenty of time and he makes the catch to retire the side. But Tampa Bay comes up with a run of the inning on two hits and at the end of two, Devil Rays one, Red Sox nothing. Back in St. Petersburg where the Tampa Bay Devil Rays enjoy a one nothing advantage. Time now for our. Who had the longest managerial tenure in Red Sox history? We will have the answer in the next half inning. Talking about managers today as the Devil Rays have lost theirs firing Larry Rothschild if you're just joining us tonight and Hal McRae taking over here in Tampa Bay as the very first manager of the Devil Rays is gone. Manny Ramirez leading things off here in the fourth inning fly to center his first time and takes a pitch inside high ball one. Looking to expand on a 12 game hitting streak here tonight. Another fastball right up and in and drops the bat to duck back out of the way. Every fastball uh, from Lopez to Manny has been inside, trying to tie him up inside. Pitch down and away, and it's now three and oh to Ramirez. I'll be not too happy. Ramirez takes the strike three and one. These guys would have been teammates, I would think, over in Cleveland. Uh, Abby Lopez coming up in the Cleveland organization, and of course, Ramirez. Longtime member of the Indians. I don't think they were, as the 3 1 is a little bit low, and Manny gets the leadoff walk here. Second time in the game, the Red Sox have had the lead man aboard. As Dante Bishop walked in the second and got as far as second and was stranded. See what the fate Manny Ramirez has in store for him here in the fourth with Dante Bichette coming up for the second time. Dante lifts it in the air down the right field line. Jose Guillen running into foul ground. And he'll make the catch over by the bullpen mound. A couple things to deal with over there as you run into foul ground. Of course, the mound over there. Some of the bullpen pitchers uh, down there as well. But Jose Guillen makes the running catch in foul ground. And there's one away. There's a lot of things to deal with. you got to deal with those catwalks. they got wires hanging down from the catwalks. you got the mound, as you mentioned, Don. Uh, Ball goes up in the air here. You never know where it might land. <laughs> so one away and it brings up Scott Hatterberg who struck out his first time. One of four K's orchestrated tonight by Albie Lopez in his outing. First pitch strike. I have a neat note on Albie Lopez. When he first got called up to Cleveland his parents drove all the way from Arizona. To Kent, Ohio, to see him where he was working at Double A. They got there after the long drive, only to find out that their son was pitching on the West Coast that night. 
on uh, ESPN that he had gotten the call up so they had the chance to watch it from Kent where he was supposed to be while he was pitching in Anaheim for Cleveland in his uh, first ever major league debut. And don't forget baseball tonight in Sports Center on Nesson after the game. That's right. I'm sure they'll be talking about the Mark McGuire situation. Mark McGuire going on the DL today. And he still has some soreness in that knee. Sorak is out for the season I hear too. Yeah. I'm sure they'll cover all of that in baseball tonight. Berg waiting on the one two that is a little bit low and outside two and two the count. It is the anniversary of a major baseball event. It's the 20th anniversary of the longest game in baseball history. There's Pawtucket Rochester 33 innings. Game in which Wade Boggs who is here tonight participated in as Hatterberg strikes out inning second out. Talking about trivia questions. I'll get to that in a moment. Just a fastball down and away off the outside edge, and Hatterberg just there trying to foul the ball off, but uh, no contact. And Lopez has struck him out twice in this game. A uh, trivia question: Wade Boggs was, of course, in that 33 inning game at Pawtucket. So was Cal Ripken, who played the entire game. There was only one player for both sides who did not play. It was an active player on the roster. The 33 inning game, and he is a former manager of the Red Sox, oddly enough. Won't keep you in suspense. Kevin Kennedy was the only player that did not play in the longest game. He was a backup catcher for the Rochester Red Wings at the time. The 1 0 is hit sharply into right field for a base hit. And a Ramirez will move up to second base. Shea Hillenbrand has another hit tonight, and the Red Sox have two on with two outs. Well, Hillebrand now uh, the five game hitting streak. Nice piece of hitting there. A line shot right over the head of Russ Johnson. <laughs> Hillebrand's up there to swing right from the first pitch. I mean, he's not up there to take. And it's funny, last night they wanted to give him the baseball when he eventually drew his first walk uh, forever. I right? didn't have one in spring training, I didn't have one in the regular season. He said, I was brought up here to hit, not walk. Wanted to walk you to have been a mailman. <laughs> <laughs> so two down runners at first and second. Brian Daubach struck out his first time in the second inning. This time the Red Sox have had two men on in an inning, and Daubach offering it the first pitch. And they move Gerald Williams in the left center, the center fielder, somewhat of a gap out there in right center field. On the corner, and Bryant's down nothing in two. Well, he's really picking apart that outside corner on these left handed hitters. And it's been a spot so far that uh, Brian Onora has given him the benefit of the doubt. He keeps hitting that spot. He's 0 2 to Dabar. Is hit well towards right center field into that gap. Williams is going to have the speed to get over there and make the catch to retire the side. He was swung over towards left center, but got great speed. He runs it down. Red Sox gone on the fourth. Still Tampa one, Boston nothing. Back at Tampa Bay as we get ready for the bottom of the fourth inning. Tampa Bay on top, one to nothing. Time now for our Aflac trivia question answer. Who had the longest managerial tenure in Red Sox history? And the answer is Joe Cronin, 13 years, 1935 through 1947. Jimmy Williams will get up to that at some point. How long has Jimmy been here? What's this? His fifth year? Fourth year? Fifth year? We'll get somebody yeah. on that. Well, I think it's his fourth. Fifth. Fifth year. After further review, it's gone by fast, hasn't it? Is the first pitch to Ben Grieve is outside ball one. Ben Grieve's now ahead two and zero. Oh. Paxton Crawford has had trouble with the lead man so far. Each of the first three innings they've reached for the Devil Rays. He's now fallen behind Ben Grieve two and zero. Oh.
Up in the air off the left side. Gotta make sure it doesn't hit the roof. It doesn't. Lands back down into the seats. They don't have uh, just one catwalk here. It looks like they have a series of three. <laughs> they got three different tiers of catwalks. Maybe four, actually, if you look up higher. Four. Yeah, the <laughs> last two, the last two, if it hits those two, it's a home run. If it hits that one closest to up top, then the ball is uh, in play off the catwalk. There's all kind of yeah. crazy rules, but uh, and they have really come into effect quite a bit here. They tried to remove some of that the second catwalk up there, the the one that Manny hit last night. Thinned it down a bit, but still uh, there's been some contact as we saw Ramirez hit it last night. There's all kinds of stuff up there on the catwalks as well. Some extra lights. That's a good change up again. Three strikes out here after Crawford was behind him. Comes back to get him with his fourth K. Uh, that, that pitch there has been uh, what's kept this game close uh, for Crawford because he struggled with his slider. He's had a pretty good fastball, but he's had an outstanding change up to both right handers and left handers. So one away here's Jose Guillen who single to left his first time one of four hits rendered by Paxton Cropper. As he fouls that back to the backstop one and one the count. See that restaurant out in center field straight away center. Yes it's very dark. But you can Yes. Joe and Connie Remy are watching the game from in there tonight. Formerly a 44 Glendale Street in Somerset, now live in Deltona, Florida. But they're in there watching the game. They're having dinner. That's terrific. And that's them. I can't believe it. They picked them out. Them? Yeah. That was Joe and Connie right <laughs> in the front row. <laughs> you have to get a ticket to be in there? Yeah, you buy a ticket and you go in. Yeah, I guess you have a, they have a buffet and you can sit there, watch the game, and that's great. Should do the game from out there. You can't really see it from here. All it is is uh, dark windows. Of course, it's uh, part of the batter's eye out there in straightaway center field. That's probably why. That's probably. They got to get Joe to get that white hat off. That may be bothering the hitters. <laughs> one one fouled off the right side, and it's one and two. That's them. I'm telling you, to the right, you can barely see, but that white hat on top there—that's Joe. Connie's in front of him. <laughs> Amazing. How are they faring in the cold weather down here? Because they've been down here a little while. I know that. They came up for lunch today and they had like winter coats on for crying out loud. I said, it's not that bad. <laughs> for them it is. <laughs> He's like, go back to Boston for a while. Chop to third. Hillenbrand is there, even with the bag, the good throw, and there's two down. Now, well, Jerry, we'd like to take time out to welcome Red Sox fans in Western Massachusetts now watching Nesson on Shrewsbury Cable, expanded basic channel 66. Remy, Shrewsbury Cable's expanded <laughs> basic subscribers can now enjoy Nesson's coverage of Red Sox baseball and Bruins hockey, the Boss Sox, Providence Bruins, Collegiate Sports Action, and more. Orsillo. So we hope our new Shrewsbury Cable viewers will enjoy the addition of Nesson to their expanded basic channel lineup. Gotten very formal. Used to be Don and Jerry. It's now Orsillo and Remy. I don't know if you noticed that. That, uh, that cable system, I think, is out west, west of yeah. Massachusetts. Yeah. It's not the town of Shrewsbury, but yeah. five in a row retired by Paxton Crawford. Now Vinny Castilla strikeout victim his first time. Lifts it in the air to center field. Carl Everett has it in his sights, and he'll put it away to retire the side. First one, two, three inning for Paxton Crawford. We're done with four from St. Petersburg. Tampa Bay won, Boston nothing. That's well, on down to the top of the sixth inning. Dante Bichette leads it off. He's walked and fouled out. Hits a line drive. Gapper into left center field. That's going to get down and roll back by the track in the wall. Dante is headed for second base. And he'll cruise in with a leadoff double here in the top of the sixth inning. Third time tonight, the Red Sox have had the leadoff man on in an inning. Dante hits this to the deepest part of the ballpark. Gerald Williams has to chase it back into that corner in left center field. Took a low breaking ball and just put it on a line. Skipped by Williams and all the way to that uh, triangle, but with nobody out, Dante's not going to take that chance. He'll hold up at second base. 
Well, but make the first out of the inning at third, and it looked like they had the pretty good position to make a good relay throw on him. First double of the year for Dante after 32 last year. Scott Hatterberg has struck out twice and takes strike one. Albi Lopez has seven Ks for the first five plus innings. He has struck out Everett twice, and he's struck out the man at the plate, Scott Hatterberg, on two occasions. It's it sharply on one hop backhanded by Johnson. Nothing he can do about Bichette, so he throws out Hatterberg at first. Ground ball to the right side, however, sharply hit. Gets Dante Bichette over to third base with one down. Well, good job by Hatterberg. He's really had a tough time against Lopez tonight with a couple of strikeouts, but when he had to hit the ball on the right side, he's able to do so, and he hit it hard. I thought for a second Johnson was going to make this play in a backhand and try to get Bichette at third base. A lot of times a second baseman will do that when the ball's hit hard, but uh, not felt feeling comfortable with that. He'll just get the out at first base. So now the infield pulled in for the Rays. Jay Hillenbrand, one for two, single to right his last time. Takes a pitch up high, ball one. The Sox have the potential tying run, 90 feet away at third base with one down. First time in the entire game they've had a runner get to third base as Shea out after that one and one the count. I wouldn't guess Hillebrand's had a lot of money to do in the minor leagues. Uh, he's always had a high average swing in the bat. One reason I don't think you can expect a squeeze here. And the one one. Is a little bit low, two and one. Well, the Red Sox have had their share of base runners. Javi Lopez, even though he's pitched very well and has struck out seven, has not yet had a one, two, three inning. Red Sox have left men on in every inning so far, and a total of seven through the first five innings. And Dante Bichette does not want to be left at third. And it's even now at two and two to Shea Hillenbrand. After Hill and Brand, Daubach waiting on deck. Brian has been ably handled tonight by Albi Lopez as well. He's 0 for 2. <laughs> on the ground, but foul outside of third. Gene Lamont knocks it down. Quite a contrast in styles uh, as third base coach is watching Wendell Kim over the last few years sprint out to that third base bag. Gene's got some bad knees. And it takes him a while to get out there. Dylan Brand lifts it in the air to shallow right. Guillen coming on. Bichette getting ready to tag up. The throw from right field is going to be close. Not really. Bichette is thrown out. He tried to jar it out of the catcher Flaherty's glove, but to no avail. Thrown out by about 5, 10 feet. And the Red Sox are gone on a double play to end things in the sixth. 1-0 Tampa Bay. I found our Citizens Bank. And not your typical fan of the game. And uh, starting them young here in Tampa Bay. Young Devil Rays fans accompanied by a Red Sox fan. Ryan Dombach leading off the inning and taking strike one. Ryan is 0 for 2 from number 8 spot in the order tonight. Striking out in the second. Flying out to center field in the fourth inning. Notice the field crew as they came out to drag the infield did a little bit of a dance there in between innings. They stole that from uh, Yankee Stadium. Uh, Yankee Stadium, I think it's YMCA they play in there. Those guys are pretty funny when they do it. I don't know if they're still doing it this season. They have the last few. And here they come out and they do pretty much the same act. But it's to uh, that devil race on whatever that is. 
Well, no, no, it's not the Devil Rays. Dance to the left, dance to the right, whatever it is. Billy, uh, Jimmy Buffett. Jimmy Buffett. Billy Buffett. Frank Buffett. Jerry Buffett. Buffet table. <laughs> <laughs> and Dombach strikes out for the second time tonight on the outside corner. Has words for Brian Onora on the way by, but he takes with him the eighth K for Albi Lopez. Lopez has been tough, real tough, and uh, there again at outside corner, he's been killing the Red, Red Sox lefties uh, with that pitch. And Brian Onora has been very consistent with that call uh, all night long. So one away, Mike Lansing coming up. As Lansing is fly to right and struck out. Right back. And a good play by Lopez lunging to his left plenty of time to get Lansing and there's two down reaction from Albi Lopez and the string continues for Lopez the complete game shutout last time out and again keeping the Red Sox goalless and now two outs here in the seven second time tonight Lansing has swung at the first pitch he is 0 for 3. Lopez getting close to the 100 pitch mark at 98 right now as he deals with Trot Nixon with two down. And records the first pitch for a strike. Trot has grounded to third, grounded to short, reached on an error. The Devil Rays have committed an error here tonight. The game's only miscue. Red Sox have not had an error. That one just off the outside edge. Look somewhat close to where Dawbach's pitch was. And trots ahead now three and one. to North Carolina during the offseason still just 26 years of age and the payoff pitch lined into left field for a base hit went with the pitch takes it the opposite way and a two out single for Trot Nixon almost every hit for the Red Sox tonight had been to the opposite field with the exception of the ball of the Bichette pulled in the gap in left center field again very protective with two strikes and Fortunate for Nixon, it was not down around the knees. It stayed up around belt high, and he's able to flick the ball in the left field for the hit. And it brings up Jose Offerman, who's had a good night. Two for three in the ball game. Swings and hits it high in the air to center field. Gerald Williams heading back towards the track, and he'll make the catch over the shoulder. He was playing very shallow, but he's got a lot of speed, and he runs it down to retire Offerman and the Red Sox in the seventh inning. Seventh inning stretch time still Tampa Bay one Boston nothing. Gerald Williams going all the way back to the warning track to make the catch you mentioned not playing shallow but uh, covered a lot of ground with his speed and took extra bases and possibly a run away from the Red Sox. We had a couple of good plays out there in center field as we head now to the bottom of the seventh inning bottom third featured for the Devil Rays. Baxter Crawford back out there for the seventh. Then he Castilla first pitch swinging. Daubach ranging over. But he won't have a, have a play. It's well back into the seats. And as Paxton Crawford takes the hill here into the seventh inning, the Red Sox have action in their bullpen. Looks like Rolando Arojo, and it is coming up down that left field line and foul ground. Now the 0-1 to Castilla. Swung on and missed. Paxton ahead of him, nothing in two. And fans ready to get on him again. Any comments coming out of Castilla over that last road trip when he was benched by ex-manager Larry Rothschild? Wanted to be traded and or released. And he waves at this one. Not a very good at bat. And it's strikeout number six for Paxton Crawford. 
He's looked just terrible tonight on breaking balls. Not a slider and not a real good one. It was away and actually off the plate. I'm not sure that pitch ever had a piece of the plate. He had one fastball and that at bat he was late on it because of all the off speed pitches he's been seeing. And they get him with the breaking ball. John Flaherty 0 for 1 with a sack fly. It's a number right back at Crawford's. Got plenty of time. Sets the good throw. And there's two down. I'll tell you what a job by Crawford tonight. He is trailing his game 1 nothing. But boy when you get outings like you've got the last two nights from your fourth and fifth starters and both guys are young. That's pretty good. Jerry this is the seventh straight game that a Red Sox starter has gone six plus as Crawford works here into the seventh inning. And Jimmy and Joe have to be especially to begin the year. Two down Felix Martinez number nine hitter 0 for two in the contest. And they will expect six of course tomorrow night time for Pedro again. Yeah, there are those who will say well it's the Tampa Bay Devil Rays that's true but Paxton also pitched a good game last time out against uh, the world champs. That pitch right down the pike and it's one and one. And a bunt try tried to drag it but he drags it foul down the first baseline. And when he gets back in the box it'll be one and two. See for most players they'll say well with two outs you know swing the bat try to hit a double. Well the fact is Martinez is not that kind of hitter. He's a, a slap hitter. If he gets the bunt single then he can quickly turn it into a steal a second and there's your double. Speed at the bottom of the order, speed at the top of the order. Gerald Williams waiting on deck, the leadoff hitter. Well, pitch ball game tonight. Albie Lopez and Paxton Crawford in a duel in the dirt. And the count evens out at two and two. Crawford one and oh coming into tonight's action with a 2.08 earned run average. Just the one run so far through six, six and two thirds. Right out of the strike zone and it runs full three and two. And he loses him. Just the first walk of the night given up by Paxton Crawford. It comes with two down here in the seventh inning. And here comes Jimmy to the mound. Looked like Jimmy was ready to head out there before uh, Martinez came to the plate. Decided against it. Martinez walks, and now he'll make the move for Rojo. How many pitches for Crawford? I have. Told that it is confirmed. 95 pitches as he heads off. So he didn't reach uh, the 100 mark, but uh, walks the last man that he faces. And this call to the bullpen is brought to you by Verizon Wireless. And Crawford heading to the dugout, trailing one to nothing, and he'll be responsible for Felix Martinez, who is at first base. But Orlando Orojo is now on for the Red Sox, and a good outing for Paxton Crawford. Again, this brought to you by Verizon Wireless. Just call to the bullpen. We'll step aside, come back, tell you about the new Red Sox pitcher. Still 1 0 Tampa Bay. Now, Paxton Crawford, a good outing. He departs after six and two thirds, five hits, the one run so far. Walked one, struck out six. And Arojo is now on. Keep a close eye on Felix Martinez. Fourth appearance for Arojo. You see the two saves. His last outing, he picked up a, a save, and that was against the New York Yankees. Worked an inning in that game. That was on the 15th. 1 0 to Williams. He is swung on and missed. Gerald was fooled, and the count is 1 and 1. Looks down in the direction of new third base coach Terry Collins, who has taken over in that capacity tonight. Time called by the home plate umpire. Yeah. 
Quick check at first and back in time is Felix Martinez. Martinez trying to get in scoring position here with two down in the inning. Devil Rays would like to add on to what is a very small one nothing advantage. There goes Martinez pitch outside and high throw from Hatterberg is in time they got him. Offerman covers a good throw from Hatterberg and they gun down Martinez to end the seventh inning. Seven full done from Tampa Bay. Devil Rays one Red Sox nothing. All pitching tonight. From Tampa Bay, one nothing. The Devil Rays. We remind you this copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Boston Red Sox may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and description of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Boston Red Sox. I'll be Lopez working here into the top of the eighth inning. Getting ready to face Carl Everett, who is one for three tonight. Carl singled his last time up after. Striking out the first two times in which he batted. Makes a big cut, misses here, nothing in one. Carl went to high school right here in Tampa, born and raised, Hillsboro High School. Produced Dwight Gooden and Gary Sheffield. Everett was quite a running back in high school, rushed for 948 yards his senior year. Ramirez and Bichette expected in the inning, and it's now two and one. <laughs> a little big cut from Carl. He didn't get cheated on that cut, but it's two and two. Well, it seemed to me like uh, Lopez would want to stay with that fastball belt high and above because uh, Carl's having a tough time catching up to it. Keeps it high this time up and away. Three and two the count. And the payoff pitch to Everett. This foul tipped at the dish. Sox have left eight men on through the first seven innings. They've had base runners in every inning. As Alba Lopez has battled his way out of a couple of situations. Red Sox have had only one runner to third base. That was Dante Bichette in the sixth inning. Well, not going with the batting gloves tonight. And ball four. Lopez upset with himself as he walks the lead man here in the eighth. Well, the Red Sox have the right people up this inning to do a little damage. Tanyan Sturitz, the right-hander, is going to start to loosen up as Bill Fisher comes out to the mound to try to delay a little bit. That's uh, Lopez uh, up around 110. I don't think so. He's 102 coming into this inning. As Fisher making his way towards the pitcher's mound, Tanyan Sturitz out there from Worcester, Massachusetts. Well, for now, Bill Fisher survived the uh, managerial change. Only one coach, Jose Cardinal, was uh, let let go by the Devil Rays. Fisher really came in here last year, replacing uh, Ricky Williams, yeah. and uh, done a decent job pitching-wise. Their problem really has been with the offense. I got an interesting note on him in his bio in the media guide. They have a list of longest active tenures in professional baseball. The number one that they list is Johnny Pesky. Is in his 56th year in baseball at 81 years of age. Bill Fisher is second at, in his 54th year and he is 70 years of age on opening day. Don Zimmer is third in his 53rd year. So really three Red Sox ties there in Pesky Fisher and Zimmer as the first pitch. To have a hit tonight. Check of Everett who's back in time. Up and away, and it's two and oh. 
Yeah, it might be tiring a bit. The last couple of pitches uh, look like tired throws from Albi Lopez. Lopez at 114 pitches in his outing now. As the right-hander Tanyan Sturz continues to warm in the bullpen. And it's 3 and 0. So he walks ever to begin the inning, only the third walk of the night given up by Albi Lopez. Ramirez bats now, and then Dante Bichette would be next. Ramirez out after the 3 0, and he pops it up foul. Flaherty coming back, but he won't have a play. As Manning got the green light, 3-0, and he fouls it off. Got the green light, but didn't get the good pitch. Well, McCray in his first game at the helm. Found out at 7 a.m. this morning that he was the new manager of the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Larry Rothschild was told last night that he would not be returning. Three and one the count to Manny. And he takes ball four. Lopez has walked back to back Red Sox to open up the top of the eighth inning. Pinch runner going in now Darren Lewis uh, for Ramirez. So Manny will leave, and Darren Lewis will run at first base for Ramirez. Everett at second. And Dante Bichette, after talking to Gene Lamont, is coming to the plate. And here comes Hal McCray after Dante was announced. Lopez, 117 pitches deep into his outing, and he may have thrown his last pitch. As Tanyan Sturtz appears to be ready in the bullpen. So Albi Lopez outstanding again. Fresh off his uh, shutout last time out. He's not yet rendered a run, but he'll be responsible for both Everett and Lewis who are on. And he gets a nice hand here from the 16,222 on hand here at Tropicana Field as he heads off. So Albi Lopez is gone. This call to the bullpen brought to you by Verizon Wireless. Tanya Sturtz is coming on. We'll tell you about him. We come back. Still one nothing Tampa Bay. Albi Lopez is done after seven plus innings, 117 pitches. And it was pretty impressive tonight. He got Carl Everett on two occasions early in the ball game, and ends up with a total of eight strikeouts over seven plus innings. And he departs with the one nothing advantage, but. Responsible for the two men on. And Albie will be one. Dante Bichette first pitch swinging fouls it straight back to the backstop. Batting with two on nobody out. Bichette is one for two. He doubled his last time. A gapper to left center field. He got through to the track in the wall. Also walked tonight, fouled out to the right fielder Jose Guillen. In on the grass to step at first is McGriff. Sturts with the 0 1. Last foul off the right side, nothing in two. Take a look at the numbers uh, for Tanyan Sturtz making his sixth appearance uh, out of the bullpen. The record of 0 1. Seven innings, six hits, one walk, and eight strikeouts. Graduate in 1988 of St. Peter Marion High School in Worcester, Mass., born in Worcester. Now resides in Irving, Texas during the offseason. So two line foul down the right field line towards that raised bullpen cafe. So 
Roberts has been well traveled. He's pitched for the Cubs, Rangers, White Sox, and Devil Rays in the major leagues. He's been in the major leagues since 95. And his first AL victory came with the Texas Rangers at Fenway Park, his own backyard. It's the Red Sox in 1997. He is 0-2 to Dante Bichette. On the ground towards second base. Russ Johnson to second for one. On to first. It's a twin killing. Big double play for Tanya Sturts. Over to third goes Carl Everett. But now there are two outs here in the top of the eighth. And the Red Sox have not had many chances in this game. And the few they have had, they have not taken advantage of. Quickly got ahead of Bichette. Bichette just trying to stay away from the strikeout. And some quick work by the middle infielders to turn over the double play. Is that throwing arm again uh, very evident from Martinez the shortstop. So now two quick outs and Everett moves to third base. Well it'll take something from Scott Hatterberg who's 0 for 3 his first look at Sturts and he takes strike one. Get him over the plate, Lou. Hatterberg hoping he will fare better against Sturts than he did against Lopez tonight. Everett with a lead off third. And a little bit too far outside this time one and one. One for five against Sturts over the course of Hatterberg's career. Sturts 30 years of age pretty big six foot five 205 pounds. Now 3 for 13 in the early going. The 2 1. Swung on, right back up the middle into center. Everett will score, and the Red Sox have tied it 1 1. A big two out ribby single for Scott Hatterberg's tied the ball game. That also sounded like a broken bat, but right back up the middle for Hatterberg. Remember, he hit the ball hard last time at the second base. And this time that looked like an off speed pitch moving away from Hatterberg sounded like a broken bat right toward the end but up the middle so a big two out base hit and ball game is tied up. So Scott Hatterberg coming up big here in the eighth Red Sox have tied it Shea Hillenbrand now the runner at first takes a look at strike one Shea is one for three in this one. He's grounded back to the mound single to right and flied out to the right fielder. And with his base hit tonight is now hit safely in 14 of 15 games on the year for the Red Sox and in his major league career. Kind of strange because Hillebrand was called back. They had Veritek on deck. And then once Hatterberg got the base hit, Veritek went back in and uh, Hillebrand back to the plate. So I guess if they had walked uh, Hanneberg, they were going to pinch hit Veritek. That thing is, you've lost Ramirez for the game now. They pinch ran for him and pinch ran for him at first base. So he is uh, no longer in that lineup. Because that pinch run, that was wiped out by a double play. Two and two now to Hill and Brand. Hatterberg with the short lead at first, and the pitch lined into right field, and it'll fall in front of Guillen. Hatterberg just gets to second base, and Hill and Brand has a single to continue the inning. Red Sox have runners at first and second with two down. Well, it looked like Guillen wasn't quite sure whether he should go try to make this play, get the out, or back off. He ends up backing off and kept the ball from getting behind him. Once again, good solid contact by Hillebrand. It'll bounce a short hop. And then uh, Guillen's able to get that ball quickly in his glove, and that'll hold Hatterberg at second base. It looked like for a minute that ball might skip by him yeah. all the way to the wall. Well, indecisive coming on as Al McCray looks over at his lineup card. Daniel Sturtz has come on. He got a big double play with two on and nobody out, but since then he's given up a single that ties the game. And then another single by Shea Hillenbrand. So two on, two outs. Daubach, 0 for 3. Takes ball one away. 
nobody in that bullpen either uh, for Tampa Bay. I thought they'd have their left hander. They've only got one uh, Creek, but he has not been up uh, to loosen up. And Dombach jumps ahead 2 and 0. Oh. You've got to think that if Dawbach's able to reach uh, by a walk, you would probably hit O'Leary or Veritek for Lansing. Uh, no lefty up in that pen. And the 2-0 to Dawbach swung on and missed. Up and away went lunging at Tad. Sturt's trying to preserve what is a 1-1 tie now on the top of the eighth. Dombach swings and fouls it off the left side. Let's look into the second deck here, more of the mezzanine level than anything else. There's Veritek still with the helmet on and the bat in hand, so imagine you're right. Maybe if uh, Dombach does get on here and the inning continues, he would hit for Mike Lansing. Even if the Red Sox took the lead, uh, they would probably put Gray back in defensively. That's what the move they've been making when they have a lead late in the game. So you would expect them to hit for Lansing. Two and two to Dombach. Swung on, hit high and deep to right. Yen is headed back, looking up, and that ball is gone. A three-run home run, a monster blast to right for Dombach, and the Red Sox take a 4-1 lead. Well, I'll tell you what, you got to tip your cap. You know, you start off with a couple of walks, you get a double play, and it looks like it's going to be a complete disaster, and then three stray hits. Hatterberg, Hillenbrand, and the bomb by Dahlbach. And I mean a bomb. That ball was crushed. That was something off speed. I don't know if it's a changeup or a splitter, but, boy, that certainly quickened the head of the bat up for Dahlbach, and he lost that in a hurry. Now by the diamond vision out there in right field. That ball was crushed. Mike Lansing a bat for himself now with the three run lead. Yeah, the pitch grabs the corner. And it's nothing in one to Mike Lansing. Sixth home run of the year for Brian Daubach. A big one here. Red Sox trailing one nothing coming into the inning. They lead it four to one. And this is lying in the left field. Lansing has his first hit of the night. like something off speed from Tanyan Sturts right out over the heart of the plate and Dawbach just absolutely kissed this one. That's up there where there aren't many people are sitting. And he's got to love that doing against uh, the Devil Rays. Second day in a row that he's homered against the Devil Rays starting to enjoy coming here to Tropicana Field. John Nixon bats with Lansing at first. And take strike one. Trot one for four tonight. Oddly enough, everybody in the Red Sox order, the starting nine has at least one hit with the exception of Manny Ramirez, who has a 12-game hitting streak snapped tonight. And he did reach by way of the walk. And that came in this inning before Darren Lewis ran for him. The Devil Rays now have right-handed action up in their bullpen, but it may be too late. Kenny Hill, who had a real tough outing last time against Baltimore, a bunch of wild pitches. Now the one two. Low and inside, two and two now to Nixon. Trot is the eighth member of the Red Sox to bat here in the top of the eighth. On the ground and through the right side. Vacated right side. Up to second base goes Mike Lansing, and the hitting continues for the Red Sox in the eighth. Boy, all this coming, too, with the two outs. The Gray sending Fisher back out to the mound. Hill's not ready yet down in that bullpen. And Albie Lopez, who pitched one heck of a game tonight, sees it uh, just blown away here on the uh, top of the eighth inning. 
Was he left with the one nothing advantage but he was responsible for the two runners on so. And now the conversation going on at the mound. Ken Hill still warming up in the bullpen. What a monster blast that was. And Dombach getting his sixth home run of the year, and uh, Jose Offerman will be the ninth man to bat of the inning for the Red Sox. They have five hits, and so far they've scored four runs. Offerman hitting at 348 as a pair of hits. Two of the 11 the Red Sox have now banged out. Jose has been hot. Fouls it off the left side, and it's one and one now to Offerman. Tampa Bay has the top of the order coming up. Williams, Johnson, and Greg Vaughn to bat in the bottom of the eighth inning. No action in the Red Sox bullpen, so it's going to be a Rojo again uh, coming out for the bottom of the eighth. The 2 1 to Offerman. In the dirt, gets away, hit up off the umpire, and back to the backstop. And everybody's going to move up. Nixon to second, Lansing to third. On the wild pitch. Ball bounces way out in front of the plate, and watch the umpire gets him right in the chest. And then deflects down to that Red Sox dugout. So two more men in scoring position. Offerman puts a charge into this one into left center field. It'll fall. It's a gapper, and it'll score two. Lansing in from third. Nixon scores. Two-run double for Jose Offerman, and the Red Sox lead it 6-1 to one as they've scored six times in the eighth. Well, it's like the Red Sox couldn't wait till Albie Lopez left the game. A couple of walks to start off the inning, and they had just... Done a whole ton of damage against the Tanyan Sturitz. Offerman finds that gap. It'll get by Gerald Williams. Two more RBI. Offerman picks up his second and third RBI of the season. His third hit of this game. Well, Tanyan Sturitz is going to leave after he got a key double play to begin the inning. Things went south from there. And he's headed off. So the Devil Rays will use a third pitcher tonight. As the Sturts heads off, this call to the bullpen is brought to you by Verizon Wireless. And Ken Hill, who's been warming up in that bullpen, will be coming on for the Devil Rays. And we'll step aside here. Six to one the score. Red Sox now on top. Carl Everett batting here, facing the new pitcher Ken Hill, the right-hander, the third pitcher used tonight by the Devil Rays. Talked about the tough outing for Hill last time out. Surrendered three runs uh, on Monday against Baltimore. A hit, two walks, a hit batter, and two wild pitches. Red Sox have batted around in this inning. Carl Ebert started the inning by walking. Six hits and six runs later. Red Sox are on their third pitcher that they have faced in the inning. Offerman at second base. All of this coming with two down. And a strike grabbing that outside corner two and one. Ken Hill an offseason acquisition by the Devil Rays. Only signed him to minor league deal but ended up making the team out of spring training. It high in the air towards right center field. Back goes Guillen still going. It's going to one hop the wall. Heading over is the center fielder Williams. Offerman scores easily. Everett is thinking three all the way, and he'll get there, sliding into third base. An RBI triple, and the Red Sox lead it seven to one. And I've seen a couple of strange things here in this game uh, from Tampa Bay. First of all, obviously not having a left-hander warming up in that bullpen available to come in. Now we obviously don't know if uh, Creeks hurt, it, but he's certainly listed on the lineup card. He was not available. First base open there. Why not walk Everett? You got Lewis on deck who has come in to, to pinch run for Ramirez instead the triple 
And another run for the Red Sox, a seven run inning here in the eighth. Well, Darren Lewis will bat for the first time, came on to run in this inning for Manny Ramirez. And he fouls the first pitch back to the backstop. And he had walked twice tonight, fly to center, fly to left. But again, his 12 game hitting streak is ended tonight. The 0 1 pitch on the way. Lewis will take it a little bit high, 1 and 1. And Lewis hitting at 222 so far. Made his last start in the outfield on Patriots Day against the Yankees, in which he played center field. It's this one high and deep to left. Reeve headed back. Track at the wall. It is gone. A two run home run for Darren Lewis. Manny, who? The Red Sox have scored nine times in the eighth. They don't need Manny Ramirez in that cleanup spot. They got Lewis. And a tough start to that man's career at the helm of the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Lewis put in for a pinch runner and now ends up with a two run home run. We talked about how Lewis been pulling the ball more this spring. Well, he got one to pull there and uh, got enough. His first home run of the season. Red Sox have nine runs in the inning. The last time the Red Sox had a nine run inning. It was last July the 3rd last year at Minnesota. As Bichette takes a strike and it's one and one. They have erupted here. The base runners all night. Every inning they had at least one man on through the first seven but could not convert. Boy have they converted in a big way. Bichette turns on this and rips it foul down the left field line. Men have come to the plate now 12 with Bichette. Eight hits and the nine runs. And this is ripped towards the gap in left center, but Williams will run it down. Down. Center fielder over and in and finally ends the inning. But the Red Sox score nine times in the top of the eighth and lead it nine to one. Don Orsillo and Jerry Remy back at Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, Florida, where the Red Sox have erupted nine times in the eighth inning. And it all started with Brian Daubach's smash home run. Daubach's sixth of the year. And to put the Red Sox on top four to one after they had tied the game. They had five more. Albi Lopez left, and he left with a one-nothing lead. And he's sitting there now trailing by eight. Flaherty, the RBI sack fly, the only run now for the Devil Rays. The three-run shot we just saw from Daubach. And Aaron Lewis with a two-run home run, part of that big nine-run eighth inning. It's amazing. Before that nine runs, as we like look at the defensive changes, you got O'Leary moving into left field. Taking the place of Dante Bichette. Raybeck takes over at shortstop. Lansing moves to second. And Arojo remains in the game as pitcher. And Arojo has a chance to win this game now as well. He came on for Paxton Crawford last inning. Gerald Williams leading off two for three in this ball game. I mean the Red Sox prior to that nine runs didn't even have anything close except for that uh, play at the plate where he ends with a runner out. Dante Bichette but uh, they had no chances until the nine runs. Albi Lopez pitched very well tonight. There's nothing to show for it. Devil Rays have action in their bullpen. We see another pitch in the top of the ninth. Hit well to left, but O'Leary ranging back short of the track. He'll make the catch. And Gerald Williams is retired. And it'll bring up Russ Johnson, who's one for three. O'Leary in the ball game for Dante Bichette. Bichette did bat as part of that big eighth inning. Russ Johnson singled his last time up, stole a base. 
incredibly Dante Bichette made all the outs in that inning. The double yeah. play ball and then uh, finished with a line drive to center field. 1 0 is a strike over the inside corner. And a strike. Johnson was thinking about swinging, but it's a called strike anyway over the inside corner. Greg Vaughn will be next. If the Red Sox hold on. They would be 5 0 against the Devil Rays on the season. Dawbaugh calling and he makes the catch with the feet firmly on the dirt of the infield. Russ Johnson disposed of two away. And Arojo has looked good since coming on. That's the first two here in the eighth and it brings up Greg Vaughn. Arojo came on with two outs in the seventh inning after Crawford had relinquished a walk to Martinez and then Scott Hatterberg threw Felix Martinez out at second base to end the inning. Well, Rojo has retired the first two here in the eighth. Greg Vaughn has struck out twice tonight. Two of six strikeouts that Paxton Crawford had over his six and two thirds innings of work tonight. On the corner, and it's one and two. He's got their lone run back in the second inning, but it's been all zeros up until the top of this inning. Now the 2-2 fouled off by Greg Vaughn. It was interesting. Between innings, actually during the Red Sox inning, Aroma went back down to the bullpen to, to play catch. And Hal McRae notified the home plate umpire, and they stopped him from doing that. I did not, I was not aware that that was a rule. I thought that the pitcher would go out there and throw yeah. in the bullpen, but apparently not. Hal McRae noticed it right away and they made him stop right away as strike three to Greg Vaughn first strikeout for Orlando Arojo in order go the D Rays in the eighth we played a nine to one Boston inside Tropicana Field here in St. Petersburg Florida and the Devil Rays have brought on another pitcher their fourth pitcher of the ball game after their starter that man Albi Lopez Worked the first seven plus, giving up just the one run, and he struck out eight. He's got to be frustrated. He will, uh, after coming in at two and one, seeing a couple other guys run out there now. Dan Wheeler, born in Providence, Rhode Island, resides in Warwick, Rhode Island. 23 year old right hander was uh, just called up today after Travis Harper was roughed up last night. He was sent down by the ball club to Durham, and they called up Dan Wheeler, who's brought in by Hal McRae. First pitch to Hatterberg is in there for a strike. Dan Wheeler, a 34th round pick at the Devil Rays in 96, did not sign until 97. Graduate of Pilgrim High School in Warwick, Rhode Island. Graduated in 1995. Made his big league debut with the Devil Rays in 99. And Hatterberg with a big cut, one and two. Back, the youngest player ever to appear in a game for the Devil Rays in their brief history. 21-year-old, seven-month-old Dan Wheeler, and he did arrive here in 1999. Was the third Tampa draft pick to reach the major leagues. Ryan Roop was first, and then Mickey Callaway. Two were ahead of him, but he is the third. His 2-2 to Hatterberg is fouled back to the backstop. I think everybody around here is still in shock from the uh, the eighth inning. Two outs, nine runs. Oh. On the outside corner, and Hatterberg is struck out for the third time tonight. 
Dan Wheeler gets him to begin things here in the top of the ninth. Well, you know, three strikeouts for Hatterberg tonight. He's one for five, but that one hit was huge because that came after two were out. After that double play ball in the eighth inning, he got things started, and uh, the rest of the team finished it. So a rough night, one for five, but he got an awful big hit in this game. I don't think he liked that call. <laughs> One down for Shea Hillenbrand, who's two for four. Look at this, uh, Don. We got a live shot going on here right next to us. Uh, it must be one of the local TV stations doing a live shot. And they must be getting ready for their 10 o'clock news. Maybe it's a maybe it's a Fox station. 10 o'clock. It was amazing how many crews were out here today after Larry Rothschild was fired. Everybody was out here today. The huge press conference. And everybody had a live shot from here. They wrapped all the way around from first base to third base around the home plate area. I hope they don't put that light on because uh, they'll make them shut it off. Line drive into center field for Shea Hillenbrand. He's got his third hit of the night. And it comes with one away in the ninth inning. This keeps hitting, doesn't he? Here's a live shot going on. That's right next door to us. They get ready. It's 10 o'clock news. It's a Fox station. They all come on at 10, right? So they got to come live from the ballpark. And they're not going to like what they hear either. <laughs> <laughs> so one out, one on. Hillenbrand has three hits in the game. The Red Sox now have 15. As Brian Daubach swings away, hits it high in the air, up by the roof. Out towards shortstop Martinez waiting and he ducks back to make the catch That almost caught a large speaker right up over the pitcher's mound but it does not and uh, comes back down again into the glove of Felix Martinez Daubach is gone and there's two away well it sure did look like that was going to hit some junk up there didn't it yeah <laughs> that was way up there all kind of wires and speakers and catwalks <laughs> there is a lot of stuff up there a lot I don't of know. junk <laughs> Mike Lansing will bad now. He's one for four. I'm sure, all those wires have a purpose. Oh yeah, I'm sure they do. They probably hold up the roof. <laughs> I can't wait for this live shot to go off. It's going to be on channel 13 here locally. You're going to make faces through the window. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do that. <laughs> you know, get back there and wave. I think she's a little nervous about you right now. Actually, I think she thinks that's going to happen. Now she's she, right now she's rehearsing. Tough night over here at Trump. Tough debut for Hal McRae. <laughs> I think you should try to become a part of this live shot if you can. Somehow, maybe I don't want you to fall out the window or anything. But if you can get around, it'd be no big loss if I did. <laughs> <laughs> the two-one is swung on and popped up. Foul ground first base way. Flaherty and McGriff heading over. McGriff will lean in and make the catch. Right nice at the play. railing. Nice play by Fred McGriff. And the sides retired. Top of the ninth done for the Red Sox. They get a hit but no runs. Lead it 9-1 to one as we head to the bottom of the ninth. Fred McGriff's going to lead it off. McGriff, Grieve, and Guillen. McGriff made a great defensive play. And things in the top of the ninth, leaning into his own dugout. Red Sox have action in the pen. As Arojo works here into the ninth. McGriff, a one hopper to Daubach, guarding the line. Brian will touch the bag alone, and there's one away. As Arojo has retired all four Devil Rays that he's faced in the ball game, one down. That's Derek Lowe throwing down in the bullpen. And curious, the last couple of nights with the Red Sox with pretty big leads, why he would not get an inning, but. He has not done so. He's just getting some throwing on the side right now. It's been a while since he's been in a game for the Red Sox. Ben Grieve has single to right, scored a run. The only run the Devil Rays have. Struck out on the fourth, was hit by a pitch in the sixth inning. And takes that pitch inside. In there for a strike. We've had a tough time getting going, but maybe the single will get him going. He'd been 0 for 16 prior to the single in the second inning. Now just two for his last 33. 
And it's one and two to Green. Paxton Crawford working six and two thirds, giving up just the one run tonight. Orlando Arojo came on. As Grieve checks his swing, did he go and appeal a third? And Chuck Merriweather says he did not offer. And that is lined into left field for a base hit. Heading for the corner, O'Leary's going to go run it down. Lays the ricochet off the short fencing and into second base with a one out double he is Ben Grieve. Now well, has to feel good for Grieve. He came in tonight's action one for his last 31 and he is two for three in the ball game tonight. A couple of a single a double and also been hit by a pitch uh, around a strikeout. So when you've been in that kind of slump a couple of hits feel pretty good. So one out one on and Jose Guillen coming up one for three tonight. And a right handed hitting right fielder. And Orojo starts off ahead. Sixteen thousand two hundred and twenty two on hand here tonight. And many have ducked out. As the Red Sox score nine times in the top of the eighth inning. Again, has upped his average to 150. Started the ball game at 118, but with his hit in the second inning, he's actually up the average to 150. The 0-2 is outside and low. After Guillen, Vinny Castilla on deck. One of the first things Al McCray did was to reinsert Vinny Castilla into the lineup, and he's had a frustrating night. 1 2 almost hits Guillen. He backs out of the way. 2 and 2. And he strikes out Guillen. Second strikeout for Rojo. And the Devil Rays are down to their last out. Uh, it looks like in a couple of appearances Arojo has made, he's made for this role uh, late in the ball game. He just comes in firing away. Fastballs and sliders. Went for the breaking ball there to get to Guillen. Vinny Castillo is getting booed by the fans that are left, and he swings and misses at the first pitch. Almost rooting against him here. Yeah. Then he hits a chopper down the line. It is a foul ball. Indicated by Merriweather, the third base umpire. And Steele will come on back. And the live shot's about to happen here, Jerry. Well, I'll tell you, it's 10, well, it's 10 17. I missed by a minute. Yeah. It's happening right now. No, that was rehearsal, I think. Uh, I think they're Might a tease, maybe a tease. <laughs> that was TV talk. <laughs> <laughs> she keeps looking over. I think she's very nervous you're going to do something. I would never do that to our friends at Fox. Oh, and to the count of Vinny Castilla. Devereaux down to their last strike and the pitch outside and away one and two. Rojo looks out in the direction of Ben Grieve, the only man to reach off for Rojo. Right, Castilla gets just a piece. Hangs tough one and two. Two again to Castillo. Outside and away, two and two. Rojo trying to finish it out here for the Red Sox. It'll be their fifth win in a row against the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. 
first. He has been pretty patient. He's fouled off some pitches, and now the count is run full three and two. We can get on to continue the inning. John Flaherty would be next. But Arojo has other ideas. The pitch, a grounder towards shortstop. Graybeck coming on. He's Red Sox win it. They've taken the first two from Tampa Bay. Another fine victory tonight. A come from behind victory down by just the one run most of the evening. And they blow it open in the eighth, scoring nine times. They bang out 15 hits tonight. And Arojo, who came on for Paxton Crawford, picks up the victory. So a lot of decisions for Arojo out of the gate, pitching late in games. And uh, the Red Sox have taken the first two from the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Sixteen thousand two hundred and twenty two watched it here from Tropicana Field and the Red Sox nine runs 15 hits no errors the Tampa Bay Devil Rays one run six hits and just an error and a lot of different people did it tonight with uh, Brian Daubach getting the big home run to put him on top 4 one and Darren Lewis came on and he got a home run as well the winner of Rojo one and oh the loss to Tanya Sturts 0 and 2 as the Red Sox win this one nine to one.